Hello, 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 my Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Signs. Welcome to your What Do I Need read for this uh, full moon in Libra to new moon next in Taurus. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mel for short, professional witch, professional intuitive. Very happy to be reading uh, for you today. Got a lovely spread, only five cards. We won't be here long, but... We also have to see how this plays out because these are important <laughs> and I'll tell you why but before I do that please uh, if you are new to the channel please like subscribe hit the notification bell and by all means if anything really resonates or makes sense to you comment because I like to know what it is otherwise it's just sort of like hollering out into the void <laughs> like you know getting a little bit of an echo it's kind of nice it's like oh that totally makes sense when I mean, you don't have to go into detail but you know, it's just kind of fun for me on this end. Not necessary, but nice. Uh, this is a general read, right? So please take what resonates, leave what does not. And by all means, I am available for private readings and spiritual counseling and all that. There are all links in the description box below for that. Um, but by all means, check your other signs. We're only doing five cards, fire, earth, air, water, spirit, in the five directions, east, south, west, north, center rather than above, because otherwise I'd have to hold the card up here. That would be no fun for me or you. Uh, uh, keep in mind that these What Do I Need reads uh, are about self-care, regardless of the sign, and I think we know why, right? I'm trying to really avoid talking about it at all. I actually got temporarily flagged for the live stream I did earlier today, and really I had them review, they reviewed it and it was fine, but so just to not have to go through that initial Virgo shock, you're like, what do I do, right? Uh, I'm gonna just avoid it, but you know what? I'm, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Why we all might be a little solitary right now and just a little bit, just a itty teeny, teeny tiny bit. Um, so we're gonna try and have fun with this, keeping in mind it is waning moon. But here's the astrology of it. I wrote it down because I was like, holy crap, and why it's going to be about a self-healing, self-care, waning moon, letting go tide, right? Oof, it's going to be, I think it's going to be tricky. Here's why. Starts off full moon in Libra, April 7th. Lovely. 10, 15 p.m. Actually going to be doing something in my Facebook group at around 9 p.m., I think, uh, that night, Eastern Standard Time. The Mark Angelo Lions Mal for short, private Facebook group. Have you heard of it? We're a lot of fun. We are a fun, fun group. Uh, growing every day, too, which is kind of cool. Then uh, here, I'll come here that night, and uh, I'll do uh, uh, 11, my 11 p.m. We'll do a card draw for the, the full moon in Libra, and that's lovely. Balance and all that jazz. However, <laughs> the new moon in Taurus is wonderful, lovely. Plant seeds, right? Can't beat it. We can really go for some stability, some healing, some lovely life values, second house stuff. Brilliant, 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 brilliant except that we have to go through dark moon and Aries to get there. Dark moon is the three days before new moon. It is the darkest part of the cycle. And in Aries, not exactly the most patient, peace-loving sign of the 12. Uh, tempers could run high. They're, I'm not going to say absolutely it means there's going to be violence. I don't go there. We do the best that we can to feel the tides as witches of what's coming. But it's hard not to relate it to the past as well. So self-healing particularly because of that dark moon uh, in, in Aries. <laughs> you with me? Good. Other than that, just breathe. Let's have fun with this. I know it's a little bit of long, long of a preamble, but it's only five cards, and I'd rather, when I get that feeling like, oh, with what's going on in the planet, let's just get ourselves as in alignment as possible. So let's have fun with this. This is sort of an old spread with a twist. Usually I'd use the element spread, fire, earth, air, water, spirit, in the shape of a star. This time they guided me to do it the four directions with a sent spirit in the center. So let's have a look see duxy One card each, five different cards. Here we go. Breathe. <sighs> Coming into the present moment as we do. Uh, we're going to start with The Healing with the Angels Oracle by Doreen Virtue. All the decks that I read are in the description box below. Let's find out where the angels say you can look for some healing in the element of air, the direction of the east, the rising sun, new beginnings, even though we're going into waning moon. Breathe. My angels, please, <laughs> one card in clarity. For the Aries Collective Sun Moon Rising Sign, this new moon in Libra <laughs> to new moon next in Taurus. They do that to show me the energetic thread 
uh, please, uh, one card in clarity for the Aries Collective Sun, Moon, Rising. Being assigned this new moon to full moon next, Aries 2020. What do they need in the element of air, my angels, to think about, to focus on, to contemplate? <laughs> Your intention, you big fire sign. Not just the what, the why. <clears throat> that the element of fire indicated. I mean, you can, obviously, people think about their intentions, but intentions are really not so much third eye, their throat chakra. It's about what do I choose? What do I want? What do I burn for? Not just the what, the why. Now, in my book... <laughs> Oh, come on, it's just basic. Just start researching the power of intention, right? It's like element of fire to me is the answer. The two questions, what do I want? Why do I want it? But you have angelic help. Now, whether you attach angels to any specific religious whatever, they're celestials. They don't care what we call them. <laughs> Not necessarily extraterrestrial. There's a difference between extraterrestrial and celestial. I think the difference really is higher vibration, higher dimension, right? And in a sense, Aren't we all the angels in disguise? In such disguise, we've forgotten who we are. So what's your intention, right? Get clear your intention, my Aries, to heal thyself, right? To really say, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to love myself. All that self stuff. Why? Because that's the what? Why? Because it's the best thing that I can do for myself and for everybody else. <laughs> the happier I am, the more loving I am, the more that is going to help not just heal me, because it will, uh, but the world as well. And keep in mind, these are spiritual healing. I'm not telling anybody anything crazy, right? It's like, take your meds, do what you're supposed to do, social distance, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying. I'm a witch. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to wear a pyramid hat and go run around the house naked. Although, if that's your thing, you are an Aries, I wouldn't be totally shocked. I've dated some Aries men. They've wanted... Anyway, let's move on. Breathe. Christina, breathe. My Ascended Masters, speaking of their uh, element of fire intention, please, one card from the Chuck Spizzano Love Pack. What is it that they can use their power of fire for their element of the South? Uh, for this full moon in Libra to new moon next in Taurus, considering that Aries dark moon. I mean, really, these are Aries, so we've got sun, moon, rising signs here. Be a little tricky, tricky for them. So uh, please, one card in clarity for them. What do they need to choose, to focus on, to fan the flame of their desire? <laughs> well, romance, there we go. Hey, it's an ascended master. How crazy could it be? Uh, with the with the, <laughs> with the card of romance there, it's one of the luck suit four suits in the deck. Luck is one of them. So this romance may very well play itself out in any sort of ways. But what if it's a romance with your true self? What if it's a romance with your soul? What if it's a romance? Well, go watch the the the. Uh, uh, <laughs> the path that you love reads that I just finished. Aries, uh, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, right? Because that could totally be about loving yourself, finding the romance in your own path right now. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't be hooking up with somebody that you're already with, right? Or that you already know, maybe at a distance. You know, you read a lot of the romance poetry. It's not because they're together. <laughs> Think about it. Sonnets. I yearn for you, I burn for you, I twist, I, I, twist, I writhe, I turn for you. And, you know, it's because you ain't here. Since you've been gone, <laughs> I can breathe for the first time. That's the wrong reference, though, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little more on that side of things right now. Um, so with that card of romance, to, to get if that's what sparks your fire and gets your desire, your element of transformation... Excellent. Not necessarily uh, sexual, right? Romance and sexuality, they're, they're maybe different wings on the same plane, but you can have a romance with half and half and coffee like I do. Mm. And raw organic honey with a couple of drops of vanilla extract in my wonder mug, right? I do have a romance with coffee better than a fascination or, a, or a, an addiction, God forbid. Um, but to roll with that, this is really lovely. So to clarify your tension, uh, your intention with romance, to love yourself even is an amazing thing. But don't worry, we're going to keep going. The element of water in the West, we are going to ask the goddesses, just the goddesses this time. This is a lunar thing. Take a nice deep breath. 
So for the healing of the mind, we have the intention, right? The healing of the fire, the desire, the choices. We've got romance. The healing of the water, the emotion in the West. We're going to ask the goddesses. My goddesses, please, one card in clarity for this Aries collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Uh, nope, sun, moon, rising sign. I always do that when it's the first sign, when I just did one with Venus. Please, my goddesses, one card in clarity. <laughs> oh, no, there are two. Uh, for the Aries Collective, sun, moon, rising signs. For this full moon in Libra to new moon next in Taurus, considering the element of water here, some emotional healing, what is it that they can focus on this? Okay, this uh, full moon to new moon next, April 2020, we're looking at the Aquarian card, which is very much to me about that 11th house, fixed air, seeing things stratospherically, taking the larger point of view, more friendly, more humanitarian. Really, the world peace sign is, is kind of really seriously Aquarius. But keep in mind, Ixchel, the eagle woman, hence egalitarian, look up that word, egalitarian, uh, she's carrying scissors there in order to snip away that which no longer serves, which is sort of perfect for waning moon, just saying. Considering that, it's going to be dark moon and airy, that your emotions, it might be a good idea to see things from a larger point of view, more philosophical, perhaps more spiritual, perhaps uh, mystical, but maybe even just psychological, right? To really look through the lens of psychology, self-examination, self-inquiry, uh, to use that element of air. Because with this card of romance here, it's all connected. It's, I mean, look, maybe this is, again, over a two-week period. These could be different aspects of the dimensions within yourself that create holistic health. Holistic health is about the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the physical, at least, right? There are people who add many, many more etheric and causal and stuff to that, but just pure foundation, fire, earth, air, water, spirit. This feels like a decent homeostasis. So if you're going through some romantic issues in terms of your fire, thinking about your intention, what do I want to do? Why do I want to do it? Uh, about a, uh, something in your romantic field, your desire field, uh, then to really take a, a good larger picture look uh, at your emotions, perhaps in terms of emotional patterning. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, let's ask your higher self. And I like when they suggested, the guide suggested uh, the Whispers of Love Oracle for Earth. I was like, really? The voices of the higher self? They're like, well, who else has a vested interest in what happens physically? I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense, right? The angels, eh. The masters, eh. <laughs> Maybe more the gods, yeah. But your higher self, absolutely, right? So let's ask, shall we? Nice deep breath. Ooh, okay, the Higher Self Collective, please. One card in clarity for the Aries Collective. Sun, moon, I get it. Rising sign for this full moon in Libra to new moon in Taurus. Please, what is your whisper of love for them in terms of their own physical healing, in terms of their the spiritual aspect of what they should do, what actions they could, let's not say should, let's say could take, because we all have free will about what we could do or not do. Should usually means wrong anyway. You should. I could. So please, higher selves of all involved for the Aries Collective Sun Moon Rising, what's, uh, what's the whisper of love for them this full moon to new moon next? <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. When you are excited, Aries, uh, you get ahead of yourself. Take some time to allow things to unfold. Slow down. I don't think that needs any further explanation to you. I think that pretty much covers that right there. I mean, I knew these were going to be short readings, but I didn't think one would go that fast. I mean, that's really obvious for where we are. So, of course, you know, I'm giving you a Matt Kahn healing mantra card at the end, right? It's a healing reading. It's all about self-healing. So, I mean, but that, by the way, just saying... <laughs> If you're really inflamed, Aries, during, well, really any day of the week for any sign that anyone is, slow down, relax, try and breathe. Everything that we already know what to do doesn't mean to stop feeling what you're feeling or stop dealing with what you're dealing, but um, to, to relax because we're more in alignment. We can hear our own 
not just our intuition, our own better instincts when we're relaxed. When we're all up here, we, we're not paying attention to what the body is saying, right? That's a huge part of intention too. You'll know when the intention's right by how it feels in one or any combination of the lower three chakras. I'm teaching again, aren't I? Good. So my ascended masters were ready. <laughs> They're like, we've been ready. <laughs> we're eternal. Okay, <laughs> please, one card in clarity for the Aries Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Sun, this new moon in Libra to, uh, new, this full moon in Libra to new moon next in Taurus, considering that dark moon in Aries, what is the perfect, perfect healing mantra for them? If you're new to this, one side of the card has the mantra, the other, the name of the mantra, I use the name of the mantra to look it up in the book because there's nothing else written on the card. Exploring unity consciousness. Oh, I love it. This is really good. I am one eternal light appearing as all. All right, let me read you this one. This is really good. Now, this, this is going to really help. Um, when unity consciousness is explored, you are able to sense a connection that unites all hearts. No matter how unique each person seems to be in unity, there is a willingness to accept the differences that make each other uh, that make each of us unique, while embracing the greater cosmic web of interconnectivity throughout all time and space. In exploring unity consciousness, we are not a person in search of the light. You are the light dressed up as a person along your soul's journey. This mantra is ideal for amplifying presence, grounding your energy, and deepening meditation. Yeah, so w the more in tune you are, right? So uh, we'll pop up a picture of this and, and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Um, but the more you are tuned in to unity consciousness, which is our, actually our higher self's state, by the way, and so it's kind of telling you slow down, uh, let's just pop up the picture and have a look see do -see, shall we? Just easier that way. Here we go. Magic clap. Because we start in the East with the angel of intention, your element of air to think about your intention, your what and your why, not just what you want, why you want it. Totally connecting into that romance card in the South, uh, the Ascended Masters talking about romance there, that romance, then it's got to be really in that fiery kind of way, something that you have a passion for that you would choose again and again and again, but for the best intentions, right? Because it turns you on, it lifts you up, you, your heart flies open, it's just all your senses and elements uh, affected, if not completely absorbed within. Uh, and emotionally there, yes, with the Aquarian card there to step back, look at the larger picture, keep an eye on your emotions, uh, and that kind of really pairs very nicely with, uh, because that's the goddesses in the element of uh, water in the West, match as well with the uh, the higher self talking about uh, element uh, of the uh, the north element power of earth slow down like I need to take that advice right now because this energy is high my Aries when you are excited you get ahead of yourself take some time to allow things to unfold and as a result of that you will be exploring or at least you have the opportunity should you incorporate the mantra for exploring unity consciousness I am one eternal light appearing as all. And the truth is, is that's the truth. That's the quantum truth of it. That's the spiritual truth. That's the mystical truth. That's the natural truth. Even if we're just all made up of quarks and particles, it's all the same essential quarks and particles on an energetic level. So we really are one eternal light appearing as all. Even if that light is a symbolic term here, uh, then by all means, that is going to slow you down. That is going to lift you up. That is going to help you heal. Uh, but it's also going to help you prepare for what's coming in new moon in Taurus, considering the dark moon in Aries. Not bad for five cards. There you have it. May the Aries collective sun, moon, rising signs be blessed with all that they need for this full moon to new moon next, that they may heal, that they may grow, that they may explore unity consciousness with romance, intention, <laughs> and a higher egalitarian perspective as they slow down for the well-being of all. So moted it be. And so it is. Maybe I've had one 
cup, too many cups of coffee possible. But I'm very excited for these readings. So please, thank you so much for watching, right? Please do like, subscribe, all that jazz. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed of this uh, full moon to new moon next to my Aries friends. But for now, say it with me and say it twice to be doubly blessed. Hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.